Time space diagrams are really useful for traffic engineers when looking at the coordination of traffic signals, so multiple traffic signals across an area. And for our time space diagram, we have typically have time on the X axis and distance on the Y axis. And by using those two variables, those terms, any of our lines on this graph are going to represent speeds. So that's what's going to be important here. Uh, for this example, I'm going to use Manning Drive in Chapel Hill. Uh, intersects with four roads in a relatively compressed area. I'm going to make some simplifications for this time space diagram. I'm just going to consider that each of the signals are just two phases. Uh, so the main line along Manning Drive is either green or red and vice versa with the side streets, uh, the four intersections that are here. Uh, and assuming no left turn phases for this. So again, a slight simplification just for this example. I'm also using Excel to show this. Uh, so we have some calculations and some lines. It's not a perfect program for this. There's actually uh, software that's designed to develop and analyze time space diagrams, but I just want to show the fundamentals in this example. So to start with, we need to lay out our situation. So starting at East Street, uh, 475 feet to Hibbard, 790 feet to Paul Harden, and another 590 feet to Ridge Road. So the first thing we need to do is calculate the offsets. We calculate the offset based on the distance and the speed. Uh, so I've just mentioned the distance and the speed or the posted speed limit is 25 miles per hour, so that's what we'll use for the speed. You may also use other speeds in practice. You may look at the 85th percentile speed or desired speed. When we're looking at the, the time space diagram and thinking about coordination, we can use those signals to encourage drivers to use certain speeds. And I'll talk about that later as we look at some of these example time space diagrams. But essentially, if you have the timing and the coordination of the signal set up correctly, you'll encourage people to follow that speed. Uh, you can also, if you if it's done poorly, you can encourage them actually to, to increase their speed or travel above uh, the speed limit. And so I'm just, I'm working through this in successive worksheets, adding components. Uh, the first thing using those offsets starting from East Drive is that Hibbard needs to be offset by 13 seconds. Paul Harden, 34 and a half seconds, and Ridge Road, 50.6 seconds to have a perfect level of progression going from East Drive up to Ridge Road. So what this would look like if we use this timing, I'm going to assume a 60 second uh, signal timing. So 30 seconds of green with some your clearance interval there, your yellow and then your red time. So we've got that same setup at each of the four intersections. And this is what we use the offsets for, when we're gonna start the green. So we're, our reference intersection is at east, and we're gonna offset those each of those times that we saw here on worksheet three. So now we actually are gonna have our bandwidth because we've progressed the direction going from east to ridge. So drivers going in this direction are going to have great progression. They're going to be able to go through on a green wave, a vehicle that enters the intersection at east is going to be able to proceed through very well uh, along this corridor in this direction from east to ridge. At the end, we'll look uh, in the other direction. And we're actually going to need to fill this all out. So both forward and backwards in time, we can still see uh, those bandwidth of green going from east through ridge. And this is what it would actually look like. Your, your timing is here is continuous. The signals are always changing. And there are various types of signal timing. It can be more dynamic or actuated uh, so that we're detecting when vehicles are present and changing the timing. And all that does affect the coordination. So again, I've really simplified things for this example. And in practice, it can be, be much more complicated than this. 
So we've got our 30 seconds of bandwidth, and that is occurring over and over again throughout, throughout this corridor, throughout time, as time progresses. Uh, we're going to see this continuous bandwidth that we, again, I, I set this up. This is not what, what you're going to see if you go out there, but this is a kind of an ideal situation of progressing vehicles and traveling from East Drive up to Ridge Road. 30 seconds of bandwidth is what's, what's possible here with the 60-second cycle length. Half of it going to green in this direction, the other half going to red. So the side street is going to have 30 seconds. That's also not uh, necessarily what's present there or, or common in every location. But just as an example, uh, we can see this occurring. And so, again, we've currently focused just on this direction from east to ridge. We've got great progression, 30 seconds of bandwidth. But what happens in the other, other direction? So starting from Ridge, and I've drawn this black line to represent an individual vehicle. So starting there on green, and what's going to happen between Ridge and Paul Harden is actually they're going to arrive just as that signal turns red. So that's going to be a very frustrating situation. And actually, you may and likely will encourage some people to change their trajectory, i.e. speed up, and travel over the speed limit so they don't arrive on red, so they kind of beat that signal. So that would be something that people may try to do is to speed, and that way they're going to get a much faster travel time through the corridor, and this would be fairly unsafe. We would want to avoid creating this kind of situation where we're encouraging people uh, to speed. This slope is steeper than the 25 miles per hour speed limit and something we would want to discourage overall. If we look at the time in the direction from east to ridge, it's about 51 seconds to travel along this corridor. So along this band, as a driver's going, they're going to take 51 seconds to go through all four of these intersections. But in this other direction, going from ridge to east, if we used this signal timing, which again, this is just an example, this isn't what actually is, is occurring there, it would take 95 seconds. So in one direction, 51 seconds, in the other direction, 95 seconds. So in reality, we'd probably want a mixture of these so that we get some bandwidth in both directions. There's no bandwidth going from ridge to east. You're going to have to stop. Every vehicle is going to have to stop unless they exceed the speed limit, which we're not going to want to plan for that. So kind of going back up here to this to this first segment, they're going to stop and they're going to sit through red, a full 30 seconds of red this vehicle showing one individual trajectory would be. In reality, again, there'll be multiple vehicles that are maybe another vehicle here, another one beside it. There could be several vehicles that are progressing here or traveling on this corridor. Each line, each individual line would represent a, se a separate vehicle. Anytime the line is horizontal, so in this portion here, that, that line, that vehicle is horizontal, that means Time is progressing, but distance isn't. So that means this vehicle is stopped. And that's, again, not what we want to have happen. Uh, then we're going to arrive, then we're going to have green. And so from between Paul Harden and Hibbard, we're going to have green. We're going to we're, we're going to pass through there, but then we're going to arrive on red. And we arrive near the end of red. So again, this would be another area that maybe you could you could adjust this somewhat. There are going to sit at on red, that first vehicle for 10 or 12 seconds, and then is going to proceed through that intersection and arrive at the last one just right on red. So that first vehicle probably will make it through that signal. But again, if we move another vehicle down here, so we've got a set of vehicles that were stopped at that signal with the first one, if they're going the speed limit, they're going to arrive just on red and have to wait through another cycle of the signal uh, to progress through. So this 95 seconds for this vehicle shown in the black line here to progress through the corridor is really probably a best case scenario. If you're second or third vehicle in the queue, you're going to wait much longer than that. I've also drawn all straight lines through this example, but in reality, it's not going to be uh, this perfect. No driver is traveling at a perfect uh, continuous speed. Uh, the actual trajectory will probably look something more like this, where there's some, this, this should be completely horizontal here, unless they're slightly pulling up. 
So just to keep in mind, this is not uh, straight lines are a little bit of an assumed travel pattern. It's going to be a little more, a little more messy than that in real life. And we're again, we likely will have multiple vehicles. So if we kept adding additional vehicles, those vehicles in front of them are going to affect their travel as well. So we've got a vehicle that shows up here. They're going to arrive in the back of the queue. So they're going to have a horizontal line here at this signal. Then they'll proceed here, another horizontal line here as they're stopped. Uh, they're going to start a little bit later because the vehicles in front of them need to proceed. And then we're going to have another stop here before they finally proceed through. So very difficult in the other direction and why we'd want to change this. What, and what we would do is we would in the soft, in various software or in this, the signal timing cabinet, adjust this timing where we're going to have these bandwidths line up a little bit better. So instead of giving all 30 seconds of bandwidth to the direction from east to ridge, we are probably going to sacrifice some of that. So maybe it's only 10 or 15 seconds of bandwidth, but hopefully we can give some of that bandwidth over to the other direction so we're not overly penalizing that direction. On the other hand, it may be that at certain times of day, this is the type of progression you want. You have the majority of the traffic going in uh, the direction from east to ridge. And so maybe that's maybe this is a good design. And then in the afternoon, maybe you switch it to the other design where there's bandwidth going from ridge to east. Other very important considerations I haven't talked about yet that are simplified in this example. Uh, this is in a, in a campus environment, so there should be and likely are lots of pedestrians, uh, transit, so campus buses, uh, city buses, bicyclists, a lot of other transportation going on. And this should all be part of the consideration of providing good access, good quality of service, good level of service to all these road users.